Hey, hi, hello. Let's have a bit more of Terry Pratchett's Men at Arms Corgi edition. And for our read along, we're going to start on page 104. I always look for a sensible gap, end of a passage or something that we can stop. And the next one is on 107. I'm not just going to read a couple of pages, but then the next one is on page 115. So it's quite a hefty chunk we'll do tonight, but we'll be all right. I reckon about 16 minutes, give or take. Are you ready? Are you holding on? Let's go. Doesn't he ever sleep? Thought Vimes. Doesn't that man ever get his head down? Isn't there a room somewhere with a black dressing gown hanging on the door? He knocked on the door of the oblong office. Ah, Captain, said the patrician, looking up from his paperwork. You were commendably quick, was I? You got my message? said Lord Veterinary. No, sir, I've been occupied. Indeed, and what could occupy you? Someone has killed Mr. Hammerhock, sir, a big man in the dwarf community. He's been shot with something, some kind of siege weapon or something, and just dumped in the river. We've just fished him out. I was on the way to tell his wife. I think he lives on Treacle Street. And then I thought, since I was passing, this is very unfortunate. Certainly it was for Mr. Hammerhock, said Vimes. The patrician leaned back and stared at Vimes. Tell me, how was he killed? I don't know. I've never seen anything like it. There was just a great big hole. But I'm going to find out what it was. Hmm. Did I mention Dr. Cruces came to see me this morning? No, sir. He was very concerned. Yes, sir. I think you've upset him. Sir? The patrician seemed to be reaching a decision. His chair thumped forward. Captain Vibes, sir, I know that you are retiring the day after tomorrow and feel, therefore, a little restless. But whilst you are captain of the Night Watch, I'm asking you to follow two very specific instructions. Sir? You will cease any investigations connected with this theft from the Assassin's Guild do you understand? It's entirely guild business. Sir, Vimes kept his face carefully immobile. I'm choosing to believe that the unspoken word in that sentence was yes, Captain. Sir, and in that one too. As for the matter of the unfortunate Mr. Hammerhock, the body was discovered just a short while ago? Yes, sir. Then it's out of your jurisdiction, Captain. What? Sir, the day watch can deal with that. But we've never bothered with that hours of daylight jurisdiction stuff. Nevertheless, in the current circumstances, I shall instruct Captain Quirk to take over... <laughs> Captain Quirk. To take over the investigation if it turns out that one is necessary. If one is necessary? If people don't end up with half their chest gone by accident. Meteorite strike, perhaps, thought Vimes. He took a deep breath and leaned on the patrician's desk. Mayonnaise Quirk couldn't find his ass with an atlas. He's got no idea about how to talk to dwarfs. He calls them grit suckers. My men found the body. It's my jurisdiction. The patrician glanced at Vimes' hands. Vimes removed them from the desk as if it had suddenly grown red hot. Night watch. That's what you are, Captain. Your writ runs in the hours of darkness. It's dwarfs we're talking about. If we don't get it right, they'll take the law into their own hands. That usually means chopping the head off the nearest troll. And you're going to put Quirk on this. I've given you an order, Captain. But you may go. You can't. I said you may go, Captain Vimes. Sir... Fimes saluted and turned about and marched out of the room. He closed the door carefully so there was barely a click. The patrician heard him thump the wall outside. Vimes wasn't aware, but there were a number of barely perceptible dents in the wall outside the oblong office, their depths corresponding to his emotional state at that time. 
By the sound of it, this one would need the services of a plasterer. Lord Veterinari permitted himself a smile, although there was no humour in it. The city operated. It was a self-regulating college of guilds linked by the inexorable laws of mutual self-interest, and it worked. On average, by and large, overall, normally, the last thing you needed was some watchman blundering around upsetting things like a loose... a loose... a loose siege catapult normally. Vimes seemed in a suitable emotional state. With any luck, the order would have the desired effect. Pause. This is what we talked about last night, isn't it? The patrician, like I said, now I've, like, I, I feel like I know the patrician, and I feel like I know Vimes, and you'll get to know him too if you haven't read him already. The patrician knows exactly how to use Vimes, how to manipulate him. Vimes is pretty stout-hearted and he's pretty stoic st 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 and level-headed and strong and um, stubborn. All these st 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 words tonight. But the patrician can still work around that and get him to do what he wants to do. Like I said, the patrician is always 17 steps in front. I never know whether I like the patrician or not. I think I like the patrician. He's he's a tricksy old character, and I definitely wouldn't want to get on the wrong side of him, but I do like the patrician. What a clever guy. Anyway, unpause. There's a bar like it in every big city. It's where the coppers drink. The guard seldom drank in Ankh-Morpork's more cheerful taverns when they were off duty. It was too easy to see something that would put them back on duty again. So they generally went to the bucket in Gleam Street. It was small and low-ceilinged and the presence of city guards tended to discourage other drinkers. But Mr Cheese, the owner, he wasn't too worried about this. No one drinks like a copper who's seen too much to stay sober. Carrot counted out his change on the counter. That's three beers, one milk, one molten sulphur on coke, with phosphoric acid, with umbrella in it, said Detritus, and a slow, comfortable double entendre with lemonade. Um, I'd like a fruit salad in that, please, said Nobby. Woof. Uh, and some beer in a bowl, please, said Angua. That little dog seems to have taken quite a shine to you, said Carrot. Yeah, said Angua. I can't think why. The drinks were put in front of them. They stared at the drinks. They drank the drinks. Mr. Cheese, who knew coppers, wordlessly refilled the glasses and detritus insulated mug. They stared at the drinks. They drank the drinks. You know, said Colon after a while, what gets me? What really gets me is they just dumped him in the water. I mean, not even weights, just dumped him like it didn't matter if he was going to be found. Do you know what I mean? What gets me, said Cuddy, is that he was a dwarf. What gets me is that he was murdered, said Carrot. Mr Cheese passed along the line again. They stared at the drinks, they drank the drinks. Because the fact was that, despite all evidence to the contrary, murder was not a commonplace occurrence in Ankh-Morpork. There were, it was true, assassinations. And... As aforesaid, there were many ways one could inadvertently commit suicide, and there were occasional domestic fracas on a Saturday night as people sought a cheaper alternative to divorce. There were all of these things, but at least they had a reason, however unreasonable. Big man in the dwarfs was Mr Hammerhock, said Carrot. A good citizen, too, wasn't always stirring up trouble like old Mr Strong in the arm. He's got a workshop in Rhyme Street said Nobby. Had a workshop, said Colon. They stared at the drinks, they drank the drinks. What I want to know is, said Angua, what put that hole in him? I never seen anything like that, said Colon. Hadn't someone better go and tell Mrs. Hammerhock, said Angua. Captain Vimes is doing that, said Carrot. He said he wouldn't ask anyone else to do it. Rather him than me, said Colon fervently. I wouldn't do that for a big clock. They can be fearsome when they're angry, those little buggers. Everyone nodded gloomily. 
including the little bugger and the bigger little bugger by adoption. They stared at the drinks. They drank the drinks. Shouldn't we be finding out who did it? said Angra. Why? said Nobby. She opened and shut her mouth once or twice and finally came out with it. it in case they do it again. It wasn't an assassination, was it? said Cuddy. No, said Carrot. They always leave a loat. By, by law, they have to. They looked at the drinks. They drank the drinks. What a city, said Angra. It all works. That's the funny thing, said Carrot. Do you know, when I first joined the watch, I was so simple, I arrested the head of the thieves' gold for th guild for thieving. <laughs> Sounds good to me, said Angra. I got into a bit of trouble for doing that, said Carrot. You see, said Colin, thieves is organised round here. I mean, it's official. They are allowed a certain amount of thieving. Not that they do much these days, mind you. If you pay them a little premium every year, they gives you a card and they leave you alone. Saves time and effort all round, really. And all thieves are members, said Angra. Oh, yeah, said Karen. Can't go thieving in Ankh-Morpork without a guild permit. Not unless you've got a special talent. Why? What happens? What talent, she said. Well... Like being able to survive being hung upside down from one knee of the gates with your ears nailed to your knees, said Carrot. Then Angua said, that's terrible. Yeah, I know, the whole thing is. And actually, the thing is, it works. Everything, guilds, organised crime, everything, it all seems to work. Didn't work for Mr Hammerhawk, said Sergeant Colon. They looked at the drinks very slowly like a mighty sequoia beginning to step first step towards resurrection as a million save the lot trees leaflets. Detroiters toppled backwards with his mug still in his hand. Apart from the 90 degree change in position, he didn't move a muscle. It's the sulphur, said Cuddy without looking around. Goes right to their heads. Carrot thumped his fist on the bar. We ought to do something. We could go and nick his boots said Nobby. I mean about Mr. Hammerhawk. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You sound like old Vimesy. If we was to worry about every dead body in this town. But not like this, snapped Carrot. Normally it's just well, suicide or guild fighting, stuff like that. But he was just a dwarf, pillar of the community. Spent all day making swords and axes and burial weapons and crossbows and torture implements. And then he's in the river with a great big hole in his chest. Who's going to do anything about it, if not us? You been uh, putting anything in your milk, said Colin. Look, the dwarfs can sort it out. It's like Quarry Lane. Don't you stick your nose where someone can pull it off and eat it. We are the city watch, said Carrot. That doesn't mean just that part of the city who happens to be over four feet tall and made of flesh. No dwarf did that, said Cuddy, who was swaying gently. No troll neither. He tried to tap the side of his nose and missed. Reason being, he still had his arms and legs on. Captain Vimes will wonder investigated, said Carrot. Captain Vimes is trying to learn to be a civilian, said Nobby. Well, I'm not going to... Colin began and got off his stool. He hopped, jumped up and down a bit, his mouth opening and shutting, and then the words managed to come out. My foot! What about your foot? Something's stuck in it! He hopped backwards, clutching at one sandal and fell over detritus. You'd be amazed what you can get stuck in your boots in this town, said Carrot. There's something on the bottom of your sandal, said Angua. Stop waving it about, you silly man. She drew her dagger bit of card or something with a drawing pin in it. You picked it up somewhere. Probably took a while for it to tread through. There. bit of card, said Carrot. Ooh, there's something written on it. Angua scraped away the mud. Gone. What does that mean? She said. I don't know. Uh, oh, I don't know. Something's gone, I suppose. Perhaps it's Mr. Gordon's visiting card, whoever he is, said Nobby. Who cares? Let's have a nut. Carrot took the card and turned it over and over in his hands. Save the pin, said. Save the pin, 
said Cuddy. You only get five of them for the penny. My cousin Gimmick makes all of them. This, this is important, said Carrot, slowly. The captain ought to know about this. I think he was looking for it. What's important about that, said Sergeant Colin, apart from hurting my foot like the blazes? I don't know. The captain will know, said Carrot, stubbornly. You tell him then, said Colin. He's staying up at her ladyship's now. Learning to be a gentleman, said Nobby. I'm going to tell him, said Carrot. Angua glanced through the grubby window. The moon would be up soon. That was one trouble with cities. The damn thing could be lurking behind a tower if you weren't careful. Um, I better be getting back to my lodgings, she said. I'll accompany you, said Carrot quickly. I ought to go and find Captain Vimes in any case. It'll be out of your way, she said. Honestly, I'd like to. She looked at his earnest expression. I, cu I couldn't put you up to the trouble, she said. That's all right. I like walking. Helps me think. Angua smiled, despite her desperation. They stepped out into the softer heat of the evening. Instinctively, Carrot settled into the policeman's pace. A very old street, this, he said. They say there's an underground stream under it. I read that. What do you think? Do you, you really like walking? said Angua, falling into step. Oh, yes, there are many interesting byways and historical buildings to be seen. I often go for walks on my day off. She looked at his face. Ye gods, she thought. Why did you join the watch? She said. My father said it would make a man of me. Seems to have worked. Yes, it really is the best job there is. Really? Oh, yes. Do you know what policeman means? Angua shrugged. No. It means man of the polis. That's an old word for city. All right. I read it in the book, man of the city. She glanced sideways at him again. His face glowed in the light of a torch on the street corner, but it had some inner glow of its own. He's proud, she remembered the oath. Proud of being in the damn watch, for God's sake. Why did you join? He said. Me? Oh, I... I like to eat meals and sleep indoors. Anyway, there isn't much choice, is there? It's that or become a seamstress. And you're not very good at sewing? Angua's sharp glance saw nothing but honest innocence in his life. Yeah, she said, giving up. That's right. Then I saw this poster. The city watch needs men. Be a man in the city watch. So I thought I'd give it a go. After all, I'd only have something to gain. She waited to see if he'd failed to pick this one up too. He did. Sergeant Colon write that notice, said Carrot. He's a fairly direct thinker. He sniffed. Can you smell something, he said. Smells like... A bit like someone's thrown away an old privy carpet. Oh, thank you very much, said a voice very low down somewhere in the darkness. Oh, yes, thank you very much. That's very what's name of you. Old privy carpet. Oh, yes. I can't smell anything, Angua lied. Liar, said the voice. Or hear anything. <laughs> Good old Gaspade. He's there, and he accompanying Angua. Well, lots are starting to happen in the story now. So Vimes has been told to keep off of the case. Carrot and I guess some more of the Watch really want to investigate the case. But of course, it's the Day Watch's case now, isn't it? It's not the Night Watch's case. So is Vimes going to tell them all stand down? Carrot's now on his way to see Vimes. Angua on her way back to her lodgings because there's a full moon, and we all know what's going to happen there, don't we? The rest of them half cut in the pub. <laughs> wonder why the patrician doesn't or has told Vimes not to investigate. I think, and I'm not putting out a red hair in there or anything, I'm just, I'm just going at it like it's the first time I'm reading it again. I think that he knows if he says no, he's going to do it anyway, but kind of under the radar or he says no he's going to do it anyway and put in extra effort <laughs> maybe that's why okay thanks very much for listening and i'll see you all tomorrow good night <laughs>